Isn't it a little bit sad or disappointing or even a kind of a bum out moment when you make a character, you write them down on your paper, and you just never get to use them? Well, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again to tell you a little bit more about that. What characters have you created but never used and why? Part 2. I have so many. Deep Redrick, a half sea elf hexblade. They found their patron in an ancient tomb. Their patron is a mutant mimic that lives in their bloodstream and works basically like Venom. Haven, custom lineage aberrant mind sorcerer. They were an attempt by mind flayers to evolve as a species and were rescued by adventurers before they were finished being made. Onyx Elphons, tiefling arcane archer. They were kidnapped by an elite mafia family and escaped after stealing some magic textbooks. After living on their own in the woods for a while, they figured out how to use magic. Unfortunately, they never figured out spells. Zeke and Zalen Verdante. These are actually two characters, twin tieflings, one a wild magic sorcerer and one a clockwork soul sorcerer. They got their powers from a bet made by Asmodeus and the Demogorgon. They chose two people who would be as close in upbringing as possible to each other and bargained on whether law or chaos is superior. Zaldan, dragonborn divine soul sorcerer whose bloodline was blessed by Bahamut. They wish to rid the world of Tiamat and her influence forever and have devoted their life to killing her. Antonio Duliskin, a rogue who has an enchanted lucky coin. He grew up above a gambling den looking down at the hustlers and cheaters playing cards and dice. Over the years he skirted down and collected coins by serving food and other errands. One of the gamblers tipped him a coin that was… different. He couldn't help noticing that it was unique. Years later, it was confirmed being an enchanted coin, all he knew that it was lucky. The plan was that he would use the coin to determine where to go and how to act, but the coin was trying to get to a specific baddie. The DM was thinking of the subordinate of the big bad evil guy who had a part of his soul in it. If the character or group kills him, the coin would dissolve. If the baddie died, the coin would absorb the baddie and the coin would become a weapon. Sadly, the DM stopped when his wife, a fellow player, was in a car accident. He just couldn't DM or play without thinking of her. Another DM hated the character and his character development, so I stashed it and made the DM who stopped playing, honestly, have a really good life. All the love to you, my guy. Zoroth slash Tanajar, the dragon-born bard fighter. He was the first character I ever made and I was excited to try and figure out the world through his eyes. Essentially, Slash was going to be an extension of me as a person. Just ridiculously better at, like, everything, except Charisma. That one is pretty on par. He grew up among a group of kids that were all more interested in getting into fights and physical stuff. He was a bit shorter than the rest of his peers and was called Lizard by the other kids. And this made his blood boil. But either way, Zoroth was always drawn to the art of song and storytelling because of his father who died in the Dragonborn Civil War. Upon his death, he left Zoroth, his trusty Viol, and Zoroth never left home without it. Fast forward to his adulthood, and he met an orc in a tavern who arbitrarily called him a lizard, to which he didn't take too kindly. Punches were thrown, but the orc was a good sport about it. A couple of drinks later, these two were best friends after just beating the shit out of each other not too long ago. The orc was always an inspiration to Zoroth, wanting to make him into the best fighter he could be. After the fight, he continued on his path to become more like his father, spreading joy, laughter, and stories worldwide, and like his best friend, spreading pain whenever someone pissed him off. Mechanically, I wanted a barbarian, but we already had a barbarian in the party this was planned for, so I wanted to go with fighter instead. My idea was for Zoroth to be able to use the viol as a makeshift weapon, leading to a conversation with the DM about putting an axe, guitar with great axe blades on the body, into the game at some point for him. I knew that multi-classing like this wouldn't be very optimal, but who cares, I wanted to try it anyway. The reason I never got to play him was twofold. Firstly and most impactfully, out of game drama. Two of our party members were in a relationship that went south so the girl stopped talking to the guy. This combined with an opinionated argument about sensitive subjects with another one of our guys drove this girl away from the entire group. 
The second reason was because of COVID. We made our characters in November and tried setting up several sessions between that, December, and March. Then we sort of gave up on the whole thing. Makes me sad that I never got to play Slash, but maybe I can dig him up for another campaign. So, I actually did make this character, but I've never used him. I've been waiting for a jokey one-shot to use him, as he's not much of a serious character. He's a gnome wizard named Pippin Strogger McMoon, or Mooney for short. Basically, this little guy is on the run from someone and needs to find an adventuring party to get as far away from that person as possible. He's a bit of a trickster and will completely bullshit his way out of or into any encounter he pleases. His arcane focus is a necklace he wears with a red gem in it, and has learned to make it look like he's shooting magic out of different parts of his body. As a big screw you to his opponent, he moons them <laughs> and casts his spells from his ass, <laughs> hence the name Mooney. So yes, he does just kinda pull spells out of his ass if he chooses. I got this idea when I saw a garden gnome in someone's yard that was mooning people as they walked by. I immediately thought of how great a D&D character that would make. One of the characters that I have never used is a necromancer named Clay Wiseman. His backstory is that when his mother was pregnant with him, she had some complications that could result in the death of the baby. Heartbroken, she called out to the gods begging for their help. After no god answered, she turned to making a deal with the devil to save her baby in exchange for her soul. The devil accepted the offer and Clay Wiseman was born a healthy baby... tiefling, due to the devil's interference. Being a tiefling in a city of humans made it hard for him to find a job, get a wife, etc. He later discovered that the reason why his life is such crap is due to the monster that turned him into a tiefling. He vowed to save his mother's soul through any means necessary in retaliation, and the first thing that comes to his mind is immortality. Clay then finds a necromancy school, and what better place to learn about death? So, he learns the ways to avoid it. After completing his course, he decides to take up adventuring to grow his fame and make connections in the world to find if there are more ways to save his mother. I've got a few that I'll probably never use, so I'm putting them out there so hopefully they will be used by at least someone. I'm keeping their descriptions somewhat generic, so hopefully people will feel less guilty if they want to try one of them out. A halfling beastmaster ranger who rides on his primal companion who happens to be a toad that is human height and charges at people with his spear. A dragon-born sun-soul monk who shoots their energy blast by making finger guns. A goliath battlesmith artificer whose steel defender is their prosthetic arm they created to be able to still be useful to their tribe. An orc alchemist artificer who is an apothecary and travels the world to bring his medical expertise to those who need it. A half-elf glamour bard who plays a purely support role in combat by distracting enemies. A half-orc zealot barbarian who wants to become a war cleric but was driven to obsessive zealotry and near insanity to attempt to gain the favor of a god who doesn't see potential in him. I hope you like these. I've never gotten to use these because I haven't played D&D in a few months and currently don't have a group. I actually tried to develop a young female human warlock with a crack and familiar, but I wasn't entirely sure how to pull it off since my character was on the good side of the moral spectrum and krakens are very malevolent. Eventually, my mind drifted into the gutter and I considered a sort of intimate relationship was going on. However, I quickly dismissed the idea because I couldn't imagine why a kraken would want that. But then I learned by chance of the mating ritual of the D&D krakens. It turns out that not only do the krakens both desire and despise the process and are almost forced to comply with said urges, but the males are regularly ripped to shreds by excessively heated females so often that they would resort to unusual and desperate means of avoiding it. Needless to say, it brought back the concept with an understandable motivation. I imagine the patron being a younger Kraken male who is so damn terrified by witnessing the often fatal mating process that he is desperately trying to seek a much less destructive alternative mate purely out of self-preservation and raw fear. Thus, he finds a cheerful young woman in search of power needed to fuel her life of adventure, which he offers alongside eternal youth in exchange for helping him escape that breeding frenzy hell. The girl is down with the idea, though the annoyed Kraken gets a little more than he bargained for when she becomes just a bit attached. 
Depending on how the theoretical campaign goes, this could be either a perfect well of running gags throughout the campaign, and perhaps the Kraken's annoyance evolves into a sort of entertained fondness for his warlock consort. I feel like that sort of character dynamic between a cheerful human and an annoyed deadpanning Kraken patron would make for some funny and compelling roleplay potential. Despite how much I love their personalities conflicting, the big reason I haven't played this character is because the flavor text and the consort business is something straight out of the Japanese off-brand anime, however you choose to spin it. Am I into that? Yes, but I don't want to be weird and creepy about it by forcing that fact onto my friends, even if this sort of thing only happens in the background or is scarcely mentioned, as I intended. Needless to say, I'm nervous about verbally roleplaying any of that. But some of my friends from one of my groups actually came across my notes of this warlock by accident recently. Much to my surprise, they found the concept hilarious and unconventional in all the right ways. After reluctantly explaining the logic behind why I ever put this character to use, they actually encouraged me to give her a run. I am considering it, but I'm still worried about being creepy with it and all. If nothing else, I'm happy that my friends are trying to encourage me all the same however weird my character and mind may be. A bugbear bard named Banjo who plays the banjo and has a pet bird named Kazooie that he taught how to play the horn. It's just so dumb. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here back at it again checking in after the vid as per usual. Make sure to leave a like, to subscribe, and to ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video, or if we happen to go live, though, you should check us out on Twitch where we actually happen to go live more than on YouTube now, so go and do so right now, links in the description below. And if you want to submit a story to us, please do so on r slash Mr. Ripper, and check out both our secondary channel, Riptovia, and me, Brian Von Vier, over on Twitch and on YouTube. Make sure to check all the links in the description. That being said, I try to end things on a positive note, and today's no different. Okay, look, we all have a lot of weird and goofy concepts for characters out there, and I'm sure some of them are even a little bit disturbing, twisted, comical, or otherwise too serious to be used. You'll find a group for them. You will. And I encourage you to continue making these characters for the sole fact that it gets your imagination juices flowing. We gotta stay highly imaginative and let our inner child roam free, don't we? I mean, if we don't, it's just going to build up and we're going to feel bored and boring and upset all of our lives because we never wrote it down on paper. So, don't forget your character. They won't forget you. Put it down on paper. You'll get to use them soon. All the love, everybody. Be safe, be happy, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.